you this week, which is the next instance, uh, the next update of the Android operating system, uh, as well as a new peer Google experience, which is the Nexus, uh, the Nexus S. Welcome to this. Hey, Marco. Hey, Marissa. Okay, so I have the brand new Nexus S that you just heard about. This is a phone that we've been working on with Samsung for the last uh, 12 months, really. Uh, and it's the lead device for Gingerbread, the very first device for Gingerbread, which is Android 2.3. Uh, and it's our fastest version of Android yet. Um, and the Nexus S is it's a pure Google experience device. Um, it's designed to give you the best of Google. So you get the very latest Android releases, the very latest Android features, and the very latest Android apps. And so one of the key parts of Android is Google Maps for mobile. Uh, and now with Gingerbread, we are bringing out Google Maps for mobile 5.0. And we have 100 million uh, users that are active using Google Maps for mobile, and we're really excited to look at this next generation of the product. And there's two key features in the new Google Maps for mobile. Uh, the first is dynamic map drawing. And the second is offline liability. Those are the two features that Dave and I are going to show you today. So let's go ahead and jump into an example. Let's use, go ahead and use New York City. OK, so let's see. Uh, I'll try and search for maybe uh, Chelsea Market, which I've already got here. Um, and then we get a search result. Now, uh, by the way, I'm not on Wi-Fi, um, so I'm actually on the cell network just for extra effect. That's not my choice. Um, so what you can see here is that if I pinch and zoom, you'll see a very smooth scaling of the map and very smooth scaling of the labels uh, because we're dynamically rendering the tiles on the phone. Um, and it gives you a much smoother experience, much more fluid, feels much nicer. And one of the really cool features on this is that if I use a multi-touch gesture to basically drag the map like this, I then get a 3D perspective. Um, and I can make another gesture like this to twist the map around and basically orient it into the perspective that I want to see. And so what we're doing is we're doing something that we refer to as vector maps. So instead of downloading tiles that are part of, of the map that you're seeing, we're actually downloading vector-based information, which means we can actually smoothly pan and zoom without having loading. So you probably have the experience of sitting there on Maps for Mobile and there's a gray spot on your screen, you're waiting for it to load, and it's the piece that you need, it hasn't come down. We're doing now, it actually allows us to load this up front. So let's go ahead and take a look at a specific building. Let's try the Empire State. Okay, I'm feeling brave, so I'm gonna try speech recognition. Let's see how this works out. Empire State Building. So now what's happening is we're streaming the audio to our servers, to our data centers, and does speech recognition analysis, returns the results. So a lot faster than typing. Um, so my, my favorite feature of this version of Maps is the fact that it's got 3D building support. So we actually have building information, geometric building information, for over 100 cities worldwide. So as I zoom in on the Empire State Building, what will happen is the buildings, not just the Empire State Building, but all the buildings around it will animate into position, like so. And then again, if I do the gesture that I did earlier to pan the map to a 3D perspective, you can now see the Empire State Building as well. This is just the Maps app? This is the Maps app on Android. This is the new hotness of Maps. So two more things I want to show you. So again, uh, if I use that twist gesture, I can now do a 3D panorama <laughs> of Maps. <laughs> It works in Paris, but we don't have the 3D buildings yet in Paris. So. <laughs> um, oh, so it's a canned demo. Is no, it, no, no, we actually have 100 cities. Unfortunately, Paris is, is not even the Eiffel Tower. I know, I know, it's killing us too. <laughs> it's, it's, it's on its way. I have, I have one more feature I really want to show you. So, um, so when you saw, I was like panning around the Empire State Building here, so if we bring the phone back up, right? So I can orient it, find the nicest perspective. We don't have to do it manually because this device has a magnetometer, a compass built in. So if I turn on compass mode, what will happen now is the device will animate uh, and turn, change the perspective depending on the way that I'm looking, like so. So this is a really cool feature we can add to some way in the last night. Which way are going? Would you not have a question? <laughs> sure. So that, we're, we're actually finished with that, that part of the feature. So I mean, so this is the, the overall compass piece. But we should talk about the other feature, which is offline reliability. So because vector maps. Offline what? 
offline reliability. Okay. And so not offline Gmail, which would be <laughs> not offline Gmail, but offline reliability. So one of the cool things about Vector Maps is we're about, we're downloading each case about one one hundredth as much data as we used to, which means we can actually do things like three D buildings, allow you to pan and zoom more smoothly. It also means we can store more information on the phone, which means that if you don't have a connection right then, uh, you actually may be able to continue to use Google Maps because we'll have the information cached for you for the places you go frequently. So Dave, let's go ahead and do a demo okay. of offline level. So two ways to go offline. I can either go into airplane mode or connect to Wi-Fi. So I'll actually connect to airplane mode. Um, so uh, now I see as I have no connection. Um, <laughs> And I have uh, an airplane symbol here at the top. Um, and so uh, what you'll notice is that everything is still working exactly as before. Uh, and what's actually happened here is that we've intelligently prefetched the map information. And by intelligent, I basically mean that we've looked at the positions that you frequent most. For most people, that's like work and home. Um, and we've, we've pulled that data down on the client side. And so it means that when you start up the app, it's instantaneous and the tiles are just immediately there. But also, if you have a network or flaky network, uh, they'll also appear for you. So like, for example, in your case, if you spend time in Seattle, in San Francisco, and now you're in Paris, so we would have the city maps for those cities already downloaded on your phone, especially the locations in those cities that you can be in. So I think it's pretty interesting when you think about, you know, we actually a lot of a lot of our time taking the infrastructure and getting ready for bigger and bigger data. I think one of the cool things that the maps for mobile team has done here is they've actually made their data smaller 